My name is Ali. I've been fascinated with the ocean for as long as I can remember. But this romantic vision that I always had of the ocean completely changed. I was forced to confront a side of the story I never knew. A story of just how huge our impact on the seas had become. Hi, I'm Marine, and I'm also a marine biologist. My name is Chantel, I am a marine biologist, I'm a scientist. Hello, this is Ray Hilborn. I'm a professor at the School of Fisheries and Aquatic Sciences at the University of Washington. I'm about six weeks away from earning an undergraduate degree in marine science from Boston University, so I am educated on these issues. Sea Spiracy is a new Netflix documentary by a filmmaker named Ali Tabrizi. It follows his journey of learning about issues threatening the health of oceans, such as overfishing, plastic pollution, and whaling. As far as the actual storyline of this film goes, it's pretty all over the place. He starts talking about his love for whales and dolphins, and then jumps to how plastic pollution affected him and what he could do about it. And then he goes to how he didn't know overfishing was a thing, and then kind of rotates between these three general topics for the duration of the film, loosely connecting them. You know why no one seems to really care about what researchers have to say? It's because they're too multidimensional, too nuanced. They offer a picture that is just not extreme enough. And people need extreme. So, I am not here to tell you that the oceans are not in trouble, okay? The oceans are facing a number of severe threats. Climate change is a big problem, plastic pollution is a big problem, and yes, overfishing is a big problem. But I am here to tell you that the latest documentary, Netflix documentary, called Sea Spiracy, does have a lot of misinformation, untruths, and is a very one-sided view of all of the threats that face the ocean. First, it's very clear this is not a documentary, but it's a propaganda film made by vegan activists. It makes no attempt to present the issues and provide any perspective. Okay, so the first untruth is probably the easiest to debunk, and that is that we will have no more fish in our oceans by 2048. This is some research that he quotes in the Sea Spiracy documentary. And I'm here to tell you that this is not true, okay? I need you to take this number, throw it out of your brain, and just forget you ever heard of it. So the next issue is a bit more complicated, but it's to do with the whole idea of sustainable fishing. So within the documentary, Ali says that, um, you know, there's no definition for sustainable fishing and he kind of comes to this conclusion that a sustainable fishery cannot exist. A fishery is sustainable when it continues to produce food into the future at an undiminished rate. Many fisheries have been sustainably managed for thousands of years. They have ups and downs, but they still produce food for people. Fisheries are an important part of food security and employment for many of the poorest people of the world. It simply is not an option for those people to stop fishing. Fisheries are also a critical part of the culture for native peoples all around the world, and the call to stop eating fish is an insult to their culture. In many parts of the world, effective fisheries management is in place. This covers roughly half of the world's fisheries, including most developed countries, and in those places we know that fish stocks are increasing. The idea that the oceans are being emptied of fish simply is false. The fishing industry is blamed for every single thing going wrong in the ocean, which again is just simply not true. Seaspiracy featured several prominent people who are known vegan activists. Sylvia Earle and George Mumbia in particular, and they never ask the question, if we don't eat fish, what are the environmental impacts of the other foods? Food production on land, which is what they suggest we should do, has great environmental costs, particularly land clearance to grow new crops. This is much more destructive to ecosystems than managing fishing in the ocean. Fishing is in fact one of the most environmentally friendly forms of food production because it can be sustainably done from a natural ecosystem. Any move away from, uh, from the ocean to land-based foods, whether animal or vegetable, would require more intensive agriculture, which generally comes by clearing more land. And finally, vegan activists seem to believe that no animals die to produce their food. Anyone who has ever worked on a farm uh, during harvest knows this is not true. 
My son farms 500 acres of crops and he kills hundreds of sentient animals when he runs a combine through a field, chopping up rabbits, mice, birds, and on occasion, baby deer. If you want to minimize how many animals die to feed you, eat a few large animals, not a vegan diet. If you are concerned about the oceans, you can be very selective about what fish you eat. Those that are certified by the Marine Stewardship Council or on Monterey Bay Aquarium's best choice or good alternatives are almost certainly well-managed and sustainable and usually have lower environmental impact than a vegetarian diet. It's disingenuous. It paints a very bleak and deceitful picture of the industry. It pretty much disregards the existence of small fishing businesses and artisanal fisheries. It dishonestly proclaims that governments and NGOs are corrupted. Yet without NGOs and good governing, the fisheries would be in a much more dire state today. It does nothing to teach more about the issues at stake, how they come about, who works on solving them. It completely ignores the fact that NGOs and researchers have been talking about some of these issues for decades. It is biased, prejudiced, and discriminatory. It is unfair and unjust and finally unrealistic in its solutions. Just based on the name, I knew anything trying to sell a conspiracy theory about a heavily funded and researched topic is probably going to be BS. Turns out I was right. <laughs> There's no real conspiracy theory that he even talks about. He uses the phrase, no one is talking about this a lot in hopes that you'll actually believe that he's some genius who uncovered something big. But the reality of the situation is that all of the information he presents is publicly available online. I mean, I do almost have a degree in marine science and I was aware of almost everything that he talks about and I'm not in on any multinational conspiracies to keep this information away from the public. Nothing he presents is new information, and there are industry professionals who have spent decades studying and trying to educate the public on these issues. What he actually means to say is that he specifically did not know these things, and since his mind cannot fathom a world bigger than himself, he's convinced that there's been some big intergovernmental cover-up to keep him and anyone who isn't actively looking from knowing about these issues help support the move to improve fisheries management around the world. That's how we will reduce the impact of fishing.